actually is the space elevator? How does it work and is it actually possible to construct one? Well, the basic level, the space elevator, works just like a normal elevator, only the scale, lifting mechanism and purpose are considerably different. Also, because of the sheer potential scale of the elevator, it's where the real issues come with construction and operation of the space elevator. Now, if you imagine a knitting needle thrust through a grapefruit, you'll see that as the fruit revolves, where the needle punctures the skin, it only moves by a small amount. But as you move further up the needle, it's travelling further, and as a result, it's travelling faster. Now, if you apply this to the earth, if you can make a needle long enough, the speed above a certain point along the needle, or elevator, is such that you'll be able to launch satellites or even spacecraft from it. This means that once a space elevator has been constructed, the cost of getting other objects into space, including those needed to complete more space elevators, will be dramatically reduced. At least, that's the theory. Of course, there's some massive problems to overcome first, not least is the sheer scale of construction. And if you take the diameter of the Earth, which is a little bit under, what, 13,000 kilometres, the height at which you need to launch satellites from would be just under 36,000 kilometres. Now, if the original tower type of construction was used, you need to construct a building about 40,000 times taller than the highest building yet constructed. And the forces involved would be impossible for such a construction, even in theory, to be contemplated. However, that isn't the end of the story for the space elevator, because you can solve some of the issues with it, weirdly enough, not by making it smaller, but actually by making it bigger. Here you have to think around some of the odd properties of the forces of physics, especially those regarding the centre of mass. See how this works? If we think about a satellite orbiting around the Earth, now if you extend out a 100 metre pole out from one side of the satellite, you will alter its centre of mass and destabilise the orbit. If it's left up for long enough, it will just fall out of orbit. However, if you extend another pole out of the opposite side, the centre of mass then remains the same in the satellite and it remains in its normal orbit. Now, of course, you can keep on extending, extending, extending the poles either side of the satellite and it still remains in place. Now for the really weird bit. Suppose that a pole or some other form of rigid cable was really long, like a bit more than 35,000 kilometres, extending each direction from the satellite. One end would almost touch down and reach the Earth, the other would reach far into space. If this could be constructed, then you'd have the basis for a functioning space elevator. It is like with all these things a little bit more complicated than this. And the cable that was pointed away from the Earth would actually need to be longer or have a, a counterweight on the other end. Because there's a difference in forces as you get close to the Earth, meaning that the central, for, for, central fugal forces don't actually balance out equally. There are, of course, numerous other problems with having a cable apparently floating in midair. Firstly, you need something extremely strong, but very lightweight. Possibly some form of carbon nanotube or diamond nanothread might be used, but even that is unlikely to meet the requirements needed. Also, as you get towards the satellite base of the cable, the thickness and strength of the cable would have to increase, since it would be under great strain and the equivalent of being pulled upwards and downwards for at least half of the mass of the cable at the same time. Also, cable as it dangled through the atmosphere we was predicted to massive changes in wind speed and direction at differing altitudes which even if it didn't actually break the cable immediately would cause stress and fractures to appear eventually resulting in a catastrophic failure then of course you have the issues of how do you build the cable get it into space in space then pay it out from the satellite and avoid it being damaged by space debris as yet all these problems remain to be solved However, theoretically, they could be solved, and if they were, the creation of a space elevator would revolutionise space travel. However, for many years to come, possibly even generations, the space elevator will remain solely on the design board and works of science fiction. But this possibility in the future, it may happen one day.